Is the best player available strategy leading the Falcons towards taking a receiver in round one? You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, who are helping you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So, guys, if you do not know me, I'm your very humble host, Aaron Freeman, a.k.a. Mr. Drew, a.k.a. Sirius Black, a.k.a. the Jolly Green Giant, a.k.a. the iron that sharpens the iron, a.k.a. Mr. A.k.a. been covering the Falcons for too, too long, formerly of Falcons.com, R.I.P. So going strong on this illustrious podcast, and I thank each and every one of you that is an everydayer of this podcast that makes it your first listen, your first watch of the day each and every day. And to become an everyday, all you got to do is subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So today's episode, we are joined by the illustrious co-host of the Locked On NFL Draft podcast, Damian Parson, who also works for the Draft Network. And he's going to be talking all about what he thinks the Atlanta Falcons should do in this year's draft, including what best player available means for the team in round one, some defensive players that could help out this team on day two, as well as what he could see as the perfect draft for the Atlanta Falcons a little bit later. So without further ado, let's jump into that conversation. Damian Parson of Locked On NFL Draft right now. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast. And we are joined by an illustrious guest, the illustrious guest. He is the co-host of the Locked On NFL Draft podcast, also major top dog contributor at the draft network we have none other than damian parson aka dp full-time dame on the podcast welcome back to the show my guy what's up man it's been it feels like it's been a minute since i've been over here on here talking to the dirty bird so i'm happy to be here yeah yeah and we definitely had you on last april before the draft we'll have to get you back on after the draft so we don't have to go as long to to react to the falcons draft but talking about the falcons draft you know and you can answer this question however you want. Basically, I'm, I'm imagining you're in the war room with Terry Fontenot, the Falcons general manager, and he's about to make, you know, his picks. And he's turning to you to be like, what What should I do here, Dame? So I, I'm just curious from your perspective, what should the Falcons approach to this year's draft be? I think especially early with that eighth pick, unless someone's calling with like a great haul to move down, right? Like say JJ McCarthy slipping down the board and the Broncos, which they don't, they don't have a second round pick, but you can get a, you absolutely can get their first for next year. Swap picks. You only drop down to like the 12th pick overall. Then you consider it. But I think for me is best player available, right? I think this is a draft that, and I know like a Dallas Turner has been linked to um, the Falcons because they've needed edge for quite a while. So it's like, do you want to be the first team that takes a defender with all this offensive talent on the board, right? What if Rome falls? What if Malik Neighbors falls, right? Um, and stuff like that, and, and especially in this Zach Robinson offense. I say you just try and you, you look at the board and you say best player available, right, at, at the positions of need. And then position of need, I, I look at, you know, when I've looked at this roster, it's like, of course, you know, Jeff Okuda leaving in free agency, you know, needing another corner, um, another talented corner opposite of AJ, you know, AJ Terrell. Uh, another a, a edge rusher, a, a go-to guy with Grady Jarrett, David Onyemata, and those guys on the interior. Whoever's on the edge is going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities. So whether that is Dallas Turner, Jarrett versus Leatu Latu, whoever it is, Chop Robinson, you want to make sure you get a guy that can just be that fastball, that explosive rusher, that guy that, that tackles have to fear every third down because it's like I know he's going to bring it. And that's a guy they want to pin his ears back and get after the quarterback. And like I said, and I think receiver too. I mean, I know they brought in some good, you know, getting nothing with Darnell Mooney, bringing Rondale Moore. And those are some solid depth pieces. But I'd be, I think it's going to be tough if you're at eight and for Terry to look at me and say, hey, Malik Neighbors? Like, should, should I go Neighbors or Dallas Turner or, or the best edge? And it'll be very hard to say 
not go neighbors, right? Because, you know, just looking at it from the aspect of you bring a guy like that or even Rome, you know, you have Drake London, you have Kyle Pitts. Getting that, especially with Kirk Cousins, in this offense, he knows how to run it and run it well. And he's a guy who, whether it's fantasy, relevant, whatever, he knows how to get the ball to his receivers. He, like His receivers typically always do, do well statistically. And we have yet to see that big breakout moment in year from Drake London, not by a fault of his own, but he has not had the quarterbacks that can get him the ball. And I believe if, you know, he returns to form because Achilles can be very tricky for any position, you know, especially quarterbacks bouncing, moving in the pocket, planting and driving off, uh, you know, the back foot and stuff like that. If Kirk Cousins returns to form and is really healthy Kirk Cousins, he can get the ball to Drake London at a high clip, accurate passes, and really give him the type of passes he's not been able to have. And same thing with Kyle Pitts. But you look at it with Malik Neighbors, the only thing that would draw pull me back a little bit is like, okay, I think back to those Rams. I went back and did some research. Looking at the Rams offense over the last 10 years, they have not had a tight end eclipse 700 yards receiving in any of the years. So it's like, okay, if you bring Malik, then that can, that potentially removes Kyle Pitts from the equation to an extent. And I want to see Kyle Pitts get back to rookie Kyle Pitts, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, that's kind of where that conundrum would be. At. I'm looking at Terry like, man, uh, I, will, I would love to put Malik Davis in this offense, you know? Because then it's like, okay, typically the Sean McVay offense, they can feed two to three guys, right? So you got, you know, we had, we've seen Cooper Cup and Robert Woods and um, Todd Gurley. We've seen Cooper Cup, OBJ. We've seen Cooper Cup and Van Jefferson. You know, last year, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, and Kyron Williams. So it was like, when you have Bijan in the backfield, you can't forget about him and the ultimate weapon that he is. So it was like, all right, somebody might be a little lower on the pecking order. And then I expect teams to probably call up and say, hey, so do you want to keep Kyle Pitts? Do you want to get rid of Drake May? Teams are going to inquire. I wouldn't, like, if, if Neighbors goes at eight, I wouldn't be surprised if teams call up during the draft and say, hey, we actually have a really big need at this position. You just took neighbors just questioning, do you want to keep this guy, especially with both of those guys being multiple years into their rookie year? And eventually you're going to have to pay him. So it's like, you know, a situation like that. But I think best player available, man, like you, you get whether it's neighbors again, I think you probably should go neighbors at eight, you know, just and really flush out that receiving room where you walk out of there. And you go into 11 personnel with Bijan in the backfield, neighbors in the slot or at the Z, Pitts being the versatile weapon that you can move him anywhere, Drake London handling the big X responsibilities. And as a defense, that's a headache to try and prepare for because it's like you can't you can't load the box on Bijan like that. You know, and it's like, okay, now I'm going to have to play too high. I can't load the box. Now Kirk Cousins being a veteran can check in and out of runs. We got light fronts. And it's like, yeah, that that's – I think you put the best foot forward, you know, especially offensively, uh, to put Kirk Cousins and this team. You look at Tampa Bay, losing Dave Canales, that's supposed to hurt them because that's the old OC. That's the guy that got Baker Mayfield really going. And we see it do the same thing with Geno Smith, you know, two years prior. Yeah, I think this is an opportunity for them to go best player available and really try to take – this division back because Carolina is going to make some moves. They've had a solid off season. They're going to draft. I think, you know, hopefully they draft well for their sake. But even with that, I think the two top two teams that you look at in this division is Atlanta to me and Tampa. And if you can draft, you know, get the right impact players, you know, with your picks, you, you really like shrink that any separation that's there to where you feel really good walking into those matchups and potentially taking this division back. So guys, there is more to come on today's Locked on Falcons podcast, talking with DP about some day two defenders that could help the Falcons. Now, in the NFL draft, you want to find the qualified candidates and professionals that are right fits for the right role. And the same is true for your small business. And that's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs, because LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just any old job board. It's going to help you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open for that perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. 
On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Now, you talk about the potential best player available being one of those wide receivers. And obviously, as you just broke down, you know, the Falcons would have a plethora of riches on the offensive side of the ball. But one one criticism of that, people will say, is like, what about the defense? Yes. You feel like if the Falcons went that route, they would be able to sort of swing back on day two of the draft with three picks in those rounds and really sort of load up on the defense and, and still get some impact players. I think so. I think the cornerback group is deep. There's a lot of talent there. Um, you know what I mean? To be able to fit Raheem uh, Morris's system and scheme. You think about Georgia's corner, Kamari Lasseter, a guy that can play man, that can play zone. He can also go down into the nickel, tough, physical, gritty uh, corner that's willing tackler, willing to help and run support. Um, Ty- Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon, big, tall, long leg guy that can play press, can you know drop off in the coverage. He looked really good at the senior bowl in reps where – you know, he's patient. He can kind of mirror step guys. And again, when you have that type of arm length and size and height and weight, it's hard to throw passes into his direction and complete them because he has that wingspan uh, to be able to deflect them, make the catch point and shrink the catch point for your receivers and everything. TJ Tampa uh, from from Iowa State, you know, you turn on the tape against him from uh, against Texas where he covered Adonai Mitchell, who's one of the better, more polarizing receivers in this class, man, like just teach tape type of stuff. Like locked them down, uh, patient, didn't go for all the head fakes and everything else, really patient in this process. A guy that can play man, but also play zone, cover three, cover four, those things like that. And he can make some plays on the football as well and take the ball away. So, yeah, you look at the, the, the cornerback position, edge. I think edge is there. It just really depends because edge is so tricky. Because once you get past those first three guys, Latu, Turner, and Verse, then you get to Chop Robinson, you get to Adiza Isaac, his teammate. And I know some people be like, man, I don't know if I want to go into that second round like without an edge rusher and say, well, let's take Adiza Isaac because they think about Arnold Epichetti, you know what I mean, and stuff like that, that PTSD of edge rushers that hasn't truly developed and taken that step forward. And I totally understand that completely, right? So that's why I say best player available – it would be the the preferred choice, but it's going to have to be a, a legitimate talking point on do we take edge first, right? Because you still got Chris Braswell. Uh, maybe Darius, Darius Robinson falls, but he's not a traditional true edge unless you're in like a 4-3 front. And even then, he's more – as a pass rusher, he's more – equipped to reduce down on third downs and play three tech a four I and get him in that 35, 36 inch wingspan on guards and collapse the pocket on the interior, which you already have guys that could do that right now. So that prototype isn't necessarily a need uh, for, for, uh, for your Falcons. So yeah, I'm not going to lie when you look and don't get me wrong. This is a good edge edge rush group, but for a team that needs a dude. And that's why I can, I always come back to, Needing a guy, I they might have to lean into as much as you don't want to be the first team to take a defender in this loaded offensive group. There's more receivers, like in my opinion, that could step in day one and be an impact along with what you have compared to edges to start this to come in day one and be an impact starter. Where Latu verse or Dallas Turner, I think all those guys, and to an extent, I think Chop Robinson can as well. Like people sleep on Chop. They, you know, I've seen a lot of discourse about Chop. He doesn't play the run well. That's not factual. Like, he plays the run very – even though he has, I think, they're like 30, 31-inch arms. He's got shorter arms. But he plays the run well, you know, as a stand-up edge rusher. He's very explosive and bendy. The main thing you want him to become is more of a finisher. So it's like, all right, that's a guy I could think slip to the top of round two. But lot, it's hard to look at lot two verse and turn and say – no, as long as Latu's neck is fine and your medical staff has cleared them, I think that's a real discussion at eight. Yeah, uh, that's kind of my perspective on it. Like, I feel like there's three edges at the top of the draft and then there's a, a significant drop off after that point. And it's just like, you know, as you mentioned, if you want to do and I, I, I'm just curious to pick your brain on this. Like when you look at some of those guys that are probably the, the Chop Robinsons, the Adisa Isaacs, and you compare them to what you thought of Arnold Abichetti and D'Angelo Malone, who the Falcons drafted a couple of years ago. Do you feel like those 
the guys that are going to be available on day two of this draft class are going to give you a lot more. Obviously, you know, we're, we're judging, you know, two years of, of NFL film versus college prospects. But in terms of just like if you can think back to what how you graded those guys coming out, do you feel like this crop of day two players are significantly better than what Evan Ketty and Malone were bringing to the table? I think they can be. Malone was a guy, especially, you know, D'Angelo Malone was a guy. I always knew he was going to be a, somewhat of a project, um, you know what I mean? But he was athletic, uh, twitched up, you know, first step quickness and everything, showed good hands, could bend around the edge. But it was a lot of, you know, showing those counters, showing and how to, like, same thing with route, with route runners, be that salesman, right? Sell the outside rush, be able to work back inside, cross face, different things like that. Have the counters because what happens when – that tag you're facing Lane Johnson and he's athletic enough to beat you at the apex of your rush or meet you at the apex of your rush. And you can't beat him around the edge. Do you have an inside spin counter? Can you Euro step him and get across his face and get right into the path of the quarterback, right? Can your speed, can you use your speed to force that tackle to vertical set and overset to where now you have an extra, you have that open space inside. And I never like that. I always knew it was going to be, not an uphill climb, but just a developmental arc for him. And if you don't get enough rush opportunities and different things like that, it makes it hard. And then, of course, like you want your offense to put you in more pass rush situations where you got the lead in the fourth quarter. Teams have to throw the ball. He's like, now I get to pin my ears back and go. So I felt like he was always going to be somewhat of a project. I liked Arnold Epichetti a lot. Um, really quick guy that could work the outside, but I always – Similar thing. I wanted to see those counters, that inside move and convert speed to power more consistently. So like looking at guys, you know, I think about one of my one of my favorite day two guys is Braylon Trice of the Washington, a six, six, three, two hundred. He played at like 270, but good quickness off the ball, strength can collapse the pocket, hand counters, a relentless motor. And, you know, that's a guy that I think could be could become like a number one, but it's probably more of an edge rush too. And like, you know, so you think about, okay, if we if you have already, if you already have like a, a fastball guy off the edge right now and you brought him in, that's a great compliment to that, right? Um, where you know, it, do you draft him to be the number one right out the gate? I probably I would probably say no. Um, you know what I mean? Austin Booker, really athletic kid out of Kansas, you know, who had a really, you know, strong showing at the senior bowl. And you know, he really like popped on the scene for me. I'm like, okay, this kid gets after it, he knows how to make plays good athlete. And I remember watching him after practice, I think almost every day after practice, working on his hand counters, working to get better, you know, to where it was kind of infectious as a, from a leadership standpoint, some of the other rushers started joining them and working on their stuff and then talking through counters and hand usage and setting up their rush plan and stuff like that. Marshall Nealon from West, um, uh, Marsh, Marshawn Nealon from Western Michigan, another 270 plus uh, pound guy that can get after it. So I, I do think that there's a, legit drop off to where I I think that eighth pick you might have to lean edge because you you don't want to miss out on potential elite talent for just I think you could be good I don't know if you can be great and that's the fear so guys we still have much more to come on today's locked on Falcons wrapping up with DP giving us the perfect Falcons draft in the first three rounds of the 2024 NFL draft. But speaking of perfect drafts, let me plug the Locked On NFL live mock draft airing Wednesday, April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 YouTube streaming channel, as well as the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, of course. DP, Keith of Locked On NFL Draft, myself, and so many other Locked On experts will be giving you our picks for the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft. Again, on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app on Wednesday, April 17th, beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, a six-episode extravaganza that you can only find on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, we've all been there as a player, as a fan. You know, it's halftime. Scoreboard isn't looking too good. You're feeling low. You're not sure if your team can pull out that win. But that's when you dig deep. Lift your head up and say to yourself, it's time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, 
and take as much of your friend's money as you possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go is letting you compete with your friends to get the most riches and build the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards that can compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent from your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chess and tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. Now, Dame, I want to wrap up with you. Uh, you're in the war room. Terry's went to the bathroom, drank too much coffee. He's in the bathroom doing whatever he's got to do. And he's in there. And now everybody's looking. The Falcons are on the clock. They're, they're looking at you. You got to make the picks. So I just want you to, to sort of break down what's your perfect draft haul for the Falcons. So when, you know, you're giving out your grades after the draft and you're like, this is an A plus draft for the Atlanta Falcons. This is what you're sort of envisioning in these first three rounds. Man, first three rounds, I would say, you know, round one, I would say edge rusher, whether it's Dallas Turner or, you know, whoever it is, just get one of these top three edges. That would be an outstanding pick to get that go-to edge rush guy. Second round, I honestly would say if, you know, for me, wide receiver. And honestly, I would look at uh, Lab McConkie being a great fit to this offense and this scheme, that route runner, that, that guy that can, Put pressure on defensive backs. You not call him cool. I'm not gonna go Cooper Cup and all that stuff. It's just so lazy to do it. But just thinking about what we've seen from the Sean McVay offenses, having a guy that knows how to run routes, get open, be quick, and be that quick option to pair with. And I think he walks in as a day one starter, right? I know Darnell Mooney's there, Rondell Moore's there. I have a hard time believing that those guys, even though they're they played more explosive when they're healthy and being those more more of a deep threat than he is, but giving Kirk Cousins, that just immediate separator, quick game, and that type, you know, that that those West Coast um, type of concepts that we've seen from Sean McVay and that in his offenses, and I have to expect Zach Robinson to run. So I think Lad McConkey in the second will be outstanding, and in the third round, definitely will look at corner, and corner in the third, I want an outside guy too um, to go opposite of uh, my guy. I would say. I would say Kyrie Jackson. I would say Kyrie Jackson. You get him in the third round, 6'3", 200 pounds, a great wingspan, guy that can move, and really being able to play that those mixed coverages, like being able to play man, but also play some cover four, play that cover three, and take away different routes with his wingspan, his identification skills. Um, you know, I spent time with him in the senior bowl. Really, you know, really cool, cool young man that, that plays, you know, has his head on his shoulders for the most part. But he plays the game like you want him to play at corner. I think he plays with good physicality as well. So I think for the first three, if you can get, you know, Dallas turn uh, one of these edges, Lat McConkey. I would probably say if Liz Xavier gets there in round two, I would like that as well. That like he gives you all of it. Like I think he can run, he can run routes. He's a guy that can play power slot if you want, but he also gives you that deep speed at the, with that four three nine. A guy that he's like honestly, and by the metrics. He was one of the better receivers versus man-to-man -man coverage in college football in 2023. Uh, you know what I mean? From targets to uh, converting targets into completions and getting yards. This is a big-time playmaker, in my opinion. I always compared him to A.J. Brown since, like, probably week one of the 2023 uh, college football season when he destroyed North Carolina. And just, like, watching his development throughout the season. Either way, receiver round two and getting a cornerback like a Kyrie. Jackson or TJ Tampa round three. And now you have yourself two book in corners. You have a go-to edge rusher and you have another receiver that probably walks in as a day one starter. And I feel really good about the Falcons going in. Cause I think those are the main, main needs for them heading right now. Okay. So a uh, quick question about the edge rushers. Do you have a preference on who, who that top guy should be? Or do you feel like it's kind of a pick your flavor? You know, you like vanilla, you like chocolate, you like, you know, uh, I don't know. Pistachio, that was the first ice cream flavor that came to my mind. That's the third flavor, but I know that whatever. But it, you know, is, is there is there a flavor of pass rusher that you personally like more than the others? Man, um, I, I love Leitu. I love Leitu. Like the talking about a guy that can step in and I think be a 12, 13 sack guy off the rip. 
his his pass rush process, his his polished hands. Guy that knows what he's he knows how to attack guys and w- like how he wants to set you up and different things like that. Where you look at a lot of edge rushes, they by the second step, they typically a lot of times like, from college they don't know just shit what they're about to do. They're like, what well, I'm a bull rush, you know, speed to power. Well, he knows. All right, and he's and I'm, I think he did the NFL Twitter page uh, tweeted out a clip of him going through his process and how he watches tape, and he's so intelligent in terms of studying the habits of tackles and how guys set versus speed, how they set versus power and different things like that. And you just see a guy that to me is a complete edge rusher. The questions are probably going to be a little bit in terms of he's not the most robust uh, or complete defensive end prospect, like in terms of handling the run game, as well as like a Jared verse and the upside of a Dallas Turner. But I think if I'm Atlanta, I want that guy that can come in and give me pass rush right away. And I think that's a lot too. Absolutely. Well, um, DP, appreciate you coming on, sharing your insight into the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, last question: Falcons do have a second, third round pick. Is there a, is there a player or position that you throw? Is is a quarterback? Is it a defensive lineman? If it's a safety, you know, sort of where where do you go with that second, third round pick? I I, I think quarterback, right? Because I think you have to. Some people call it hedging your bets. No, it's protecting yourself because you. You paid, you know, Kirk, but you just don't know yet what version of Kirk you're going to get. And for me, you know, especially you traded away Ritter. He's in Arizona now. Mar- Mariota's wherever Mariota is. I think he's Washington. Uh, he's in Washington with the gray hair, you know, salt and pepper up top. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, he's aged in like a year, right? Like, you know what I mean? So I think looking at a Spencer Rattler um, being a great compliment and a guy that can come in that can run, I think can run this offense and fit it well, but also a guy with the arm talent to push the ball down the field to where if Kirk Cousins is not the guy that you wanted him to be health-wise, like if he doesn't get back to being that Minnesota Vikings, Kirk Cousins, the Kirk Cousins we've seen his entire career, you have a young QB that can step in and make the necessary plays as well as just sit behind him for a year. And I know people say, well, he's like 24. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, Quarterbacks are playing to 42 now. Don't really care about the age as much, right? So looking at him, like he's really technically refined from his throwing mechanics, his footwork, and the guy that's tough, man. You know, watching tape on him and having to deal with the pressure that that South Carolina offensive line allowed consistently. Talked about on Locked On NFL Draft. We just did, um, we just did a pod um, recently where we comped him to some NFL quarterback. I think I, I landed on Russell Wilson. I think he could be a Russell Wilson type of player. But looking at his numbers, he's been sacked 73 times in the last two seasons at South Carolina, 40 times in 2023. So that just kind of gives you that, that type of uh, thought process. So, yeah, I think, you know, that second, third round pick, if Spencer Rattler's there, I'm turning that card in immediately. Give me, let me get my, my young backup QB, but also a guy that I believe could be the QB of the future whenever that time comes after Kirk Cousins. Okay, so the recap. Round one, Latu Latu, UCLA. Round two. Which corner did you say? Or no, you said uh, Lad McConkey. Yeah. yeah, wide receiver Georgia, third round a uh, corner, and then Spencer Rattler, and that's an A plus draft for the Atlanta Falcons. So you know we'll, we'll hold you to that DP uh, when when the grades come out uh, if the Falcons land that. But let the people know that now in these final two weeks, the longest two weeks out of the calendar year between the draft, what are you and Keith? got going for the people on Locked On NFL Draft that will keep their minds off of the anticipation of the 2024 NFL Draft? Uh, rankings, you know, going through prospect rankings, um, you know, kind of putting, we do prospect spotlight, talking about different players, kind of going through their game, where we see them, where we fit them. Uh, you know, Perfect Fits was one of our favorite segments uh, during the week where we put a prospect to a team and we think that's the perfect fit for them. And then we're working on some more. We've done a couple this, this so far this draft cycle, working on a couple more prospect interviews, uh, talking with some agents, trying to get some guys on, trying to work schedules through. So, yeah, these last two weeks, it's going to be a lot of fun um, and everything like that. So, definitely tap in. All right. Guys, check it out. Locked on NFL Draft, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us here. Thanks to Damian Parson. Tomorrow, your first listen will be joined by Derek Klassen of Bleacher Report to break down this year's quarterback class. Make sure you make us your first listen. Also, check out the Locked on Mock Draft live April 17th, Wednesday at 
7 p.m. Eastern time. It's all part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every 